Hey guys, uh, Nathaniel here. Uh, we're going to be doing my absolute favorite plot of all time. This is called the violin plot. So let's let's just get started. So a lot of you might not have even seen this or heard of this before. Um, I do think the tutorial that they give is pretty good. Um, but here it is. This is the violin plot. So it combines the box plot, which which is a phenomenal uh, way to visualize a distribution, with a KDE. So this this right here. We've got a, uh, a Gaussian KDE, this, this right on top. So you might, you might even recognize this from the previous ones. Um, so that's super sweet. Uh, so you'll notice again, we've got this sort of dot in the center. That's the medium. We have the quartiles. We have the uh, whiskers. Uh, and then we, of course, have the entire distribution of the KDE right here. Okay, there's, there's a particular way you should view this. Uh, we'll get to that in just one second. Okay. So you can, instead of having the box plot in the center, you can go ahead and have quartiles in the center. Those are fine. Um, you can go ahead and have sticks in the center. These are very similar to the rug plots. Um, this doesn't. This gives me no intuition. Um, maybe if you had very few data points, it might be better. Um, you can go ahead and have points in the center. Once again, that it doesn't say anything to me. Um, but here's, here's the deal. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can scale these things. One is that you can keep all of their areas the same. This is what we've been viewing. This is the default. Um, the second one is you can keep all their widths the same, um, all the widths the same. And that means ones that are kind of uh, fatter at, at various points are going to be smaller. The ones that are always skinnier at various points are going to get bigger. So this, this Sunday, which had a sort of more natural distribution, gets really bloated down here. Now here's the cool way you can scale them. You can also scale them by counts. So this shows you, this gives you the whole shebang. Okay, you get the box plot. So you get the uh, you get the quartiles, you get the median, uh, you get the uh, what 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 points tend to be the outliers. You get the shape of the distribution if it's multimodal, if it has a long tail on one side, and you get how the distributions relate to each other. So Friday, it's very small. We don't have many data points. Saturday and Sunday, very big. And you know that just from the count uh, or the scaling by count. This is awesome. Um, I, I, I love this. I, I try to use this all the time, especially if I'm trying to visualize, get a really good grasp on the distribution of specific things. Um, this can be super great if you're doing just normal data analysis. Um, and it's an awesome picture to show trends to people. Um, so this, this is great. This is great. There's only a couple more. You can uh, go ahead and add a hue. Um, and so you can visualize these two things side by side. Uh, this is somewhat nice. The other nice thing that you can do with this um, is you can go ahead and put split equals to true. Uh, and so what this will do, uh, notice we still just have one thing right in the center. Uh, so we still have that box plot and that's, that, that box plot is for both of them. Okay. Um, and unfortunately you, you kind of lose a little bit of it because we now have this divining line, the box plot, you can't necessarily see where the whiskers are too well. Um, so I'm going to have to find a palette where that works a little bit better. I just noticed that now. Um, but what you'll have is you'll have the KDE for one distribution on one side and the KDE for the other distribution on the other side. This is okay. Um, it, it looks really cool, uh, but it, it also loses a couple things in the display. It, it loses those whiskers. It loses the size of these distributions relative to each other, which, which you can, um, if you go ahead and use this and you, you scale, um, Use uh, scale equals uh, count. Um, you, you can go ahead and see the size of the distributions relative to each other, which is kind of cool. Um, hmm, just kind of interesting. Seems like Friday is like a very heavy day for smokers, not and a light day. I guess a very light day for non-smokers. Um, anyways. Uh, so you so you lose a little bit in the split. The split makes a really cool visualization somewhat, especially you have um, distributions that, uh, that that have equal number of points in them. I don't know. It's up to you guys. I, I personally I <coughs> I love this visualization. Uh, I think you guys should have at least one of these in every data analysis that you do. Um, the tutorials do a good job on this one. This doesn't have a lot of weird parts. Uh, it doesn't necessarily explain too well the count, the, the width, and the other things, and what that scale necessarily means, so I was, I'm happy to be here and explain that to you. Um, but yeah, I, I hope you guys continue to follow along. We're going to get into the more complex stuff right after this. Okay, thanks guys.